Ah, such a pleasant spring afternoon, isn't it? The cherry blossoms are falling. It is all so beautiful. We don't have to do today's video if you don't want to. You could just go out and enjoy the great outdoors, and unless you're living somewhere where there's a massive snowstorm or it's, like, really hot out or there's, like, monsoons going on. I don't know where you're living out in the world, but you could just take it chill, guys. Just take it chill. Just sit down and just drink from a saucer cup that you're pretending to be a Sakazuki with absolutely nothing in it. That's that's really how you're supposed to enjoy your spring afternoons, right? All right. So today we are going to be talking about the Zompokto of 8th Division Captain, actually the current Captain Commander of the Gotei 13, Shunsui Kyoraku Zompokto Katen Kyokutsu. All right, and uh, Shunsui is a fan favorite. We love Shunsui. In that last arc, man, he picked up that torch from Yamamoto, took up the position as the captain commander. Not something I think he would have wanted to pick himself. Central 46 kind of just gave it to him. But he realized, he's like, okay, the entire Soul Society, actually the fate of all the worlds, is hinging on us, the Shinigami, defeating the Quincy. So even though I personally don't really like this, I have to do it because it's my duty to uh, Shinigami, it's a duty to Yamamoto who was my teacher and like a father figure to me who I looked up to, it's a duty to my brother, it's a duty to his wife, it's a duty to Nanao, I have to save everybody so I'm gonna do this. Now he might be a tad lazy sometimes but his power sh uh, speaks for itself, okay? You do not want to mess with Shunsui, alright? He will, he will eliminate you but he'll do it in a very poetic kind of way. <laughs> he won't, he doesn't it just slice you down okay well he did that with Chad that one time but he wasn't trying to kill him all right so yeah he won't do that he, his Zanpakuto Katen Kyokatsu it's a little strange one it, it's one that um has that limiter on it you know that a lot of anime characters have like I can't fight you at full power because x y and z <laughs> but after x y and z have been removed you're just gonna be a pile of ash on the ground right so, in the case with his Zompakuto, though, its personality is something that actually hinders him from fighting at full power, okay? So, his Zompakuto is Katen Kyokatsu, and uh, as you can see here, it comes in the form of two Zompakuto, a rather unusual thing. Normally, a Zompakuto is just a single blade, uh, but in Shunsui's case, he has two. I'm actually curious how that worked with the Asauchi that was given to him when he was a student, because it was stated by Nimaya, you know, that all the students of the academy get one Asauchi, and then they train with it night and day, and they pour their Riatsu into it, and eventually it becomes their own Zompakuto. So, I'm wondering if in Shunsui's in Shunsui's case, he eventually got his uh, Asuchi to split. Maybe he was pouring his Riatsu into it, and then eventually he woke up one day, and there were two swords next to him, and he's like, whoa. All right. There's actually another theory regarding it, and that's that Shunsui and his Zanpakuto, uh, Katen, were lovers, and they somehow managed to have a child together who was Kyokatsu. All right, and that's that's a weird way to look at it, but one of the spirits is a very buxom adult woman, and the other spirit that represents his second sword, um, his uh, Wakazashi, is in fact uh, uh, like a child. So you, know, you can look at it that way as well, but it, it's Zanpakuto, the Bankai anyway, has to deal with uh, like a, a theater play. All right, so you could look at it like a story of a man that falls in love with his sword and they, you know, have sex. Probably a little bit more of a poetic way to say they just bang, but there you go. And then uh, they have a child that they nurture together. M maybe something along those lines. The Zanpakuto is most definitely a little different from the other ones. Okay, so Shunsui practices Daisho, and what that literally means in Japanese is just big, small, Daisho. All right, whenever you see a character uh, wielding two blades like this, like a long katana, it's Itachi in this case, and then a smaller sword, a wakazashi, and they use them in tandem, uh, usually on their hips together. That's Daisho, okay? So, uh, in the case here, the way that he explained this to Stark, and uh, Shunsui is ambidextrous, so he has both control of his right and left hand, so he can use both of his swords in whichever way, um, you know, equal strength there. Uh, he explained that he only really likes to use his uh, short sword in places where uh, 
um, you know, it's it's too, you know, narrow for him to fight. But in fact, that was just a lie that he was telling Stark. He's actually used to using both of them at any given time. See, that's the thing with Shun Sui. He'll try to do a little bit of everything to try to get the upper hand in a fight. Even after the fight with Stark, he kind of nailed, like, a, he kind of backstabbed him, if we're being honest. That's what he did. He was in the middle of fighting Rose and Love, and then at the end of their fight, Shun Sui just comes out of nowhere and just, boom, and just stabs Stark right in the back, and that eventually leads to the end of that fight. Um, and at the end of it, I think Love goes up to Shun Sui and is like, you know, you're butting into other people's fights. That's not cool. And Shun Sui just looks straight at him, and he's just like, dude, um, this is a battle. This is war. Um, you know, you know, the second that both sides go into war, they're both in the wrong. So at that point, it's just like, do what you got to do to win. <laughs> All right, I did what I had to do to win. And he wasn't happy about it. It wasn't like Shun Sui was like, I killed the first Espada. Oh yeah, I'm awesome. No, it's not like that. It's just like, you know, he kind of honestly looked at Stark and saw, man, if you and I weren't on opposite sides, I could see kind of having like a drink with you or something, right? But... What are you going to do? We're at, we're at war right now. You're pledged allegiance to Aizen. We got to make sure that we win this. So I'm going to do anything I have to do to, to win this fight. So uh, the first time they started fighting, it was pretty chill. He just took out his swords and just clashed and whatever. And then the fight started to get a little bit more serious. And then he activated his sword. His release command for Katen Kyokatsu is one of the longest ones. I think it is slightly longer than Uketake's, which is also pretty long. Uh, which means they kinda, they're kind of they used to working together. So there's a lot of dualities between Uketake's. Kitake and Shunsui, but uh, the command for his Zanpakuto, it's it's not really so much of a command like how or attack or bite, but it's like a poem which fits his personality. It's in the English dub, it's flower wind rage and flower god roar, heavenly wind rage and heavenly demon sneer, katen kyokatsu. So it's a little slightly different in the Japanese, obviously, but that you get the general idea of it. Ukitake's is also pretty long. It's uh, waves rise rise now and become my shield, lightning. Uh, strike now and become my blade, but I think Shunsui is slightly longer. All right, so here's something I didn't know. Uh, when going into his Shikai, I always assumed both of his swords, they turn into these uh, scimitar-looking things. Uh, I always assumed they were the same size, but if you actually look at them, they are, one of them, the one that is the Wakazashi, is actually slightly smaller than the one that's the Katana. So it's still basically the same general idea of how he fights. Now, the um, ability that his Zanpakuto exhibits in the Shikai, that's the tricky part, okay? Because I think he can go into Shikai whenever he wants. He can access those giant scimitars whenever they're very ornate and all that stuff, and he can fight with those. Um, but when it comes to activating the power of the Shikai, that's a little tricky because it's the power to make children's games a reality. And as I said, one of the fractions of his Zanpakuto is a small child. And the way Shunsui likens this is, you know, when the, when a child takes you by the hand and goes off to play games with you, you know, their their mood can change in an instant. Oh, let's go play Foursquare now. Let's Let's go play hide and seek. Okay, now let's play red light, green light. You know, like, so the way that this works is whatever mood his Zompokto happens to be in at the time, that's the game they're kind of stuck playing. And if they just don't feel like playing a game, then Shun Sui cannot activate any of his Zompokto's ability. Bit of a handicap there, but at the same time, it makes sense given how freakishly strong his Zompokto is. Um, it follows the rules of the game, whatever they may be, and everybody within the realms of Shun Sui's Riatsu has to follow these rules to the letter or else they will lose. In this case, winning means you live and losing means you die. Now, there's a few instances of that where it's not exactly true because there's a few times that they played games with, like, like Shun Sui played a game with Stark. Um, he used a technique called Busho Goma. And Busho Goma is just like a wind attack. It's a lazy spinning top is the translation. It's just he swings his sword and then just a wind attack goes at him. Not really hard to win or lose at that game. Another game that he used that didn't really get to finish was Taka Oni, which means Mountain Demon. And the way Shun Sui explained this game is whoever is higher up than the opponent uh, wins. But Stark didn't really play the game. What happened was Shun Sui jumped ahead of him. He's like, Taka Oni. And then Stark just shot at him. And that kind of ended the game right there. So I'm not sure if, if one of the rules is like the opponent has to know that they're playing a game and has to understand the rules for it to be fair. And if Shun Sui doesn't have the time to explain the rules, like Taka Oni, whoever's higher up. Oh, shit. And then he just keeps firing off Saros. Like maybe that might be a slight weakness there. Because if that's the case... You know, Shun Sui was higher up than Stark, so Stark should have just had a heart attack and just died right there on the spot. So, I'm thinking, like, and in and, and their fight later on with Lily Barrow, uh, Shun Sui does do that. He explains, like, I have to explain to you the rules, or otherwise the game isn't fun, and the game isn't really even a game if you don't know what's going on either, right? Um, 
So, uh, another game that he can play, and the other two games that we see very, uh, you know, flushed out during the fight between Stark and Shunsui, uh, is Kage Oni and Iro Oni. Kage Oni is Shadow Demon, Iro Oni is Color Demon. So, Shadow Demon, pretty self-explanatory, it allows Shunsui to hide in shadows. Uh, this is a skill that we we see him use the most. Uh, we also see him use this a lot during his fight with Le Barrow at the Varvelt. You know, he can literally go into, like, a little pocket universe, like a shadow dimension, and just chill out in there for a little while. So, so it's a very multi multifaceted ability. But yeah, basically, uh, the rules of this game is whoever steps on a shadow loses. So you turn into a shadow, and then if somebody steps on said shadow, you basically got a free shot to just backstab them or attack you with your sword or whatever. Your swords also can turn into shadows, so if you step on them, like, imagine a shadow blade just jutting out of the ground where you stepped on. Uh, he used that against Lile as sort of like a teleportation thing where he takes out his sword, stabs it into the ground, and then the shadow that Lile was stepping on, the shadow blade extends it out of that sort of like a teleporting warping blade so you can think of a bunch of different ways you can use that um and then the other technique is iro oni which is color demon which was one of the other ones that was you know a little bit op but you have to be in the right mood to use it so how this technique works is that whenever you go to cut your opponent you have to call out the color you want to cut you can only cut that color if you cut anywhere else like in my instance if you're like uh blue all right, I'm not wearing blue. I have black, I have red, I have gray, not wearing blue. So if you call out blue and you try to attack me from, you know, the red part of my body, uh, nothing happens. Like, I, I might get, like, a little bit of a scratch, but even if you stab me right through, the wound isn't going to be severe because you attack the wrong color. It, like, f it forces the injury, you know, to be less severe or more severe depending on what color you cut. Um, the way that Shunsui tested this out with Stark to kind of give him an idea of what this was, um, he called out the color gray, okay? And so Stark had the gray, like, fur on his arms, but Shunsui didn't have any gray on him. So when Shunsui went to go slice Stark's arm where it was gray, even though the cut felt like it should have sliced his arm clean off, all it was was a tiny little scratch. It forcibly made that wound less severe. Likewise, at the opposite end of that spectrum, if you call out a color that you're wearing a lot of on your body, so in Shunsui's case, let's say it was white when Stark called out white because he had the captain's cloak on and everything, uh, even if the cut is tiny, a lot of blood will be expelled out of it, all right? So that's how that game works. It's something you basically have to pay attention to. In the world of Bleach, where a lot of Oda's characters wear really just one single color as most of their outfit, most of the Shinigami wear black, most of the Espada wear white, most of the Quincy's wear nothing but white. It's not really that much of a concern too much. It's just like, all right, well, you're not wearing that many colors. But if it's like, you know, a situation where your opponent is wearing a lot of different colors, then you have to pay attention to, you know, where you're going to attack them and what colors you have on that on you. Um, because the color that you have the most of on you and your opponent, that's like an increase of risk. But if you cut them on that color, then it does more damage. So it's kind of like a give and take sort of deal. And the way Shun Sweet ended that fight with Stark is he took off his Captain Hayori, revealing his Shihawk show underneath, which was pure black. And so he called out black and then struck Stark right in his hollow hole, which was black, and that resulted in his death. Alright, so that did a lot of damage there. So, yeah, but, but a couple of interesting abilities. You know, in the realms of Bleach, a lot of times the abilities that the Zanpakuto have are not ridiculously complex. Um, you know, like, uh, you know, Ginichimaru's Shinso. It's just like, it's an extending blade. I mean, later on we find out, like, oh no, it turns into dust and it has a little bit of a poison aspect, but at the end of the day, it's it's like an extending blade, alright? There's not, like, this isn't like Hunter Hunter, they have a bunch of different multifaceted of abilities that you have to keep track of all at once and everything. Um, you know, Yamamoto is, he controls fire. He controls a lot of fire in a really unique way and all that stuff, but at the end of the day, nothing ridiculously complicated. Um, but Shunsui's uh, Zanpakuto is definitely one of the more complex ones, just with the different uh, children's games he could play. So there's there's two more abilities that we see in his Shikai. He uses against uh, Sternritter X, Lily Barrow. Uh, one is Daruma-san ga Konron da. I think that's pronounced. And the other one is Kageo Kuri. Okay, so Daruma-san um, is basically red light, green light. And through his fight with Lily Barrow, we actually find out an interesting weakness for the Quincy's called uh, the Rei Reikaku or the Reishi Sensing. Okay, so how this works is Daruma-san is you uh, basically have to move towards your opponent. 
uh, without them seeing you. So red light, green light. You know that game? You shut your eyes and it's like red light, green. You open up, and if any, if you catch anybody moving towards you while you open your eyes, then they're out. All right. So the way that game works is uh, there's a direct line between you and your opponent, no matter where you are. In this case, Lille, he's a sniper, so he was on top of a building just sniping everybody. And then Shuns, we activated the game, and even though he didn't exactly know where he was, uh, the game provided a straight path from wherever Shunsui was standing to Lille. And then he could use that path to rush over to Lille and attack him. However, the downside of this game is if you, uh, if Lille were to see Shunsui coming at him, then he would have died right there. However, because of Reikaku, because of this Reishi sensing, Quincy's have this incredibly heightened ability to sense Reishi. Um, he, his, uh, sense was actually too good, and he kept seeing Shunsui standing still on the ground when he was moving forward. Uh, what, what Shunsui explained how he did this is he took his Riatsu, molded it into just his shape, and because he was sensing his Riatsu, he mistook it for himself like a like a basically a reishi clone kind of deal but it would only work on a quincy because they have this incredibly high sense of reishi sensing so i'm sorry if that's a little bit confusing that's actually not so much an ability of his on pacto that's just his skill and lily's senses being super high to the point where they could pull that off under normal circumstances the daruma san game might not work too well but he was able to close the gap between him and lila and they began their fight the other attack he uses is kageo curry and this one is a uh, uh, also shadow based not a game i ever played when i was a kid but apparently how it works is um if you stare at somebody's like shadow for a prolonged period of time and really get the image in your retinas and then you turn really quick and you look at like a white wall or something or like a marble or a piece of white cement that the shadow you were staring at you know the the after image is still in your eyes and the image will be like you know transplanted to this other surface you know that that's basically the idea so in this case he can actually also mold himself into shadow to make these shadow clones or some kind of kage bushing sorted deal it's not exactly a kage bushing once again it's only made all that effective is because of lily's reishi sensing capabilities but those are some other games he's capable of okay so that's his uh, Shikai. Now, for a long time, we didn't know what his Bankai was going to be like. It, me it was mentioned during Fate Karakura by Uketake that he should not use his Bankai where others can see it because it's one of those indiscriminate types. So whoever's in the realm of his Riatsu is affected by his games and would also be affected by his Bankai. And that hinted that his Bankai was something incredibly powerful that he doesn't want the other members of the Gote to get sucked into. So only use it when there's no one else around except you or your opponent. And, you know, that's a good sentiment and all that, but you really have to think about it. If that's the way your Bankai works, that's not going to be a really easy thing to accomplish in battle. Because a lot of times they're fighting in the Seirite, where there's, like, people all around you. The only way he was actually able to use his Bankai that he could was because they were in the Varvelt at the time, which was Yuha's own fortress, and it was enemy territory. Um, otherwise, he might not have used it, because it might have harmed a lot of other people. So, his Bankai is uh, Katen Kyokatsu uh, Karematsu Shinju. Alright, and as I stated, it turns it into a play. I remember back before we knew what his Bankai was, I thought it was like, well, if his Shikai is childish games, then maybe his Bankai is like adult games, like chess or Go or Shogi or something. Maybe, maybe it would be something like that. But no, it's a play. All right, so as it's a play, it's divided into various acts. Also, while the play is active, the Zanpakuto spirit, uh, Katen and Kyokatsu, appear to Shunsui as sort of like, um, I, they assist him in various ways, although there's sort of like a, there, there's kind of like a, uh, like an old married couple vibe I get from Shunsui and his Zanpakuto, so that's how they kind of act. But you can tell that they care about each other, and, you know, she'll help him, guide him to, like, finish the fight or whatever. Um, and Shunsui even states, like, hmm, you know, I don't get to go bankai too often but i mean if it gets if it means i get to see you and touch you as an actual living person it's not so bad isn't it so yeah that that's like led it to believe that like he used when he was training with his bankai and he manifested his zompok toe they had sort of a romantic relationship from there all right and that's where the other spirit came from just an idea just a theory a bleach theory <laughs> oh my god i just thought of something all right do you guys remember when Yoroichi was teaching Ichigo how to how to use Bankai? Remember what Yoroichi said, how she explained it? She's like, in order to learn Bankai, you need to manifest the Zanpakuto, 
and you need to force it into submission so you can achieve Bankai. That's what Yoroichi said. So Ichigo had to use that Tenshin Tai stuff to force Zangetsu into the physical form and then force him into submission. Well, Zangetsu, you know what I mean. So I wonder how Shunsui got Katen to go into submission. <laughs> I, I I wonder about that, you know? She he wooed her with a nice nice romantic dinner with sake and I I don't know I don't know but anyway um so act one of this play and and by the way the acts are like right after another it's not like I don't know if he can stop after a certain act and just be like act one okay fights over by disengage bonkai or if he has to continue with all four of the acts I would assume he doesn't have to because the fourth act results in you know so I would assume that he could stop the acts or he could stop the play if his opponent dies before the end. But if their opponent is really strong and lasts all the way to the end, then we're going to have some problems. So act one is the sharing of the pain, or the sharing of the wounds, okay? And each time Shunsui activates an act, he likens it to the actual play. So there is a story that unfolds in the play as the effects are, you know, afflicting the opponent. So in this case, it's sharing the wounds. So the story here is that there is a married couple, and I guess the husband injures the woman, and he feels the pain along with her. And so in this case, any wounds that Shunsui has on his body are immediately reflected on his opponent. So in the case with his fight with Lily Barrow, uh, Shunsui was pumped full of holes. He had a few injuries, like part of his like stomach or his you know lower you know body here was ripped out by Sh by uh, Lily's attacks, and so the same exact wounds appear on Lily. However, it's mentioned that these wounds you cannot actually die from them. Okay. So, and that's because that's how the, the story goes. The plot of the story is like, the man doesn't die, so therefore you can't die from these wounds. The second act is um, a disease-based one, where the man then becomes, you know, distraught, and he just stays in bed all day, and he's just racked with guilt and gloom from injuring his beloved, and so he is afflicted with an incurable illness. How this is reflected on the opponent is these little black spots appear all over them, and they just begin just uh, hemorrhaging blood. Just blood just starts, you know, just gargling out of these spots, right? So at this point, I think you can maybe die from this because uh, it's a pretty, it's a pretty devastating ability. Like Lille, when this happened with him, he's bleeding out of the eyes and the nose and the mouth and all over his body. These pustules are this like, so it's not a very pleasant experience. And the third act is uh, diving into the abyss or the endless abyss. What this happens is, and it's very poetic, it's very symbolism, like, made manifest into the physical world. So it's like, whenever he activates his Bankai, there's this sense of gloom in the air. And it's like a, a sense that affects all of the var belt. Everybody can kind of feel it. It's like the temperature doesn't actually get lower, but it's like you feel the chills, that sort of thing. You know, it's a, it's a very poetic Bankai, right? So, in this case, it manifests a bunch of water. Like the uh, like Shunsui and his opponent are floating underneath uh, the ocean, and they're constantly getting deeper and deeper, and they're sinking to the uh, to the dark abyss below. And the light from the surface slowly begins to dissipate as they get deeper and deeper. And you can't just swim back up. Lily tried to like flap his wings, and it doesn't matter. It's like a magnetic pole, like dragging you down. And so this is representative of the wife and the husband casting themselves into the abyss together, right? And so, you think this would be also a time where I, most people would tag out and be like, oh, we'll be sucked down into this abyss until both of our Riatsus run out. And if the opponent's, I guess, runs out first and he dies and Shunsui manages to live another day, you know? Um, but if for some reason that doesn't work, then Shunsui has his last option, the final act, which as I stated is the kind of act. Um, this is pretty simple. He sheaves his sword and this like little thread appears around him and the thread wraps around the opponent and Shunsui just and then and then for added measure there's a boom. <laughs> so not only do you get decapitated it's just like for added measure to make sure that the opponent stays down we're gonna add a explosion on top of that. So um, now in the case with Lilia He's made out of light, so kind of a cheater. You know, it didn't, didn't really work too well on him because he just came back after that. Now, it was implied, I mean, it's not like Shunsui has the exact same level of damage. It's not like Shunsui's head is lopped off as well, but after he uses that technique, the final act, um, Shunsui is being kind of comforted by Katen and, you know, resting on her lap, and there's this very somber moment where it's like, 
okay, you, you did everything you could, you're now going to die because you used that technique. So I'm, I'm assuming if the opponent dies from that technique, you die as well. It's like a mutual kind of death thing. It's like a guaranteed sort of deal. It's like if all the other techniques didn't take out the opponent, this one is guaranteed to, but if it does then you die as well as the user, okay? So it was a very somber kind of moment, but it was negated, I think, because even with this technique, the strongest technique Shunsui had still wasn't enough to take down Lilla. So he didn't die, and so because of that, he was able to resist it. Shunsui was able to stay alive as well, although he was very critically injured at this point, but he managed to avoid it. Um, but yeah, once again, that was because Lilia, he was made of light, and he was going on and on. I'm God's messenger! I'm the strongest Stern Ritter! Blah, blah, blah. D tell that to Nanao when she pulls out a magic mirror sword, and then just boom, you're dead. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the techniques were really nice to witness. I wish we would have gotten to see a little bit more. Kind of the same deal with Yamamoto, and that was kind of letting me on. It's like, oh, no, is Shunsui going to die, too? Because I knew we were winding down on the end of this arc at that point. And it's the same thing that happened with Yamamoto. It's like, yeah, Yamamoto, I'm going to show you my Bonkai. Here's east. Uh, here's west. Okay, here's south. Okay, you can calm down now. Here's north. I'm like, oh, no, he's dead. And then with Shunsui, it's Bonkai. This is the play. Act one. All right, that's pretty. Act two. No, no, no. Act three. No, slow down. We're not doing Act four. Crap. <laughs> so, but he managed to avoid it. He managed to get out and, and you know, also help out in the now at the same time, which that was a nice moment. We find out all about Shunsui's backstory with his brother and his brother's wife and their relationship. And then eventually Shunsui's relationship with the now. Um, and it was, it was a nice finish, right? So, yeah, Shunsui, um, he's one of the ones that truly is in love with his Zanpakuto. Like, the relationship that they have is a little bit different from the others, you know? Um, remember when Nimaya was teaching Ichigo about what the Zanpakuto really was, and he was going down that list. He's like, what do you think a Zanpakuto is to you? You know, uh, I think he called him, like, Goichi. Wh what do you think a Zanpakuto's like, Goichi? Is it your partner? Is it your ally? Is it your, your classmate? Your lover? Mm. Or, you know, what what is it? It's like, you just stop dicking around. It's none of those things. And then the whole the whole spiel of it is that the Zanpakuto isn't somebody you fight alongside with. The, the blade is you. You are your Zanpakuto. You're pouring your Riatsu into it to make it so. So you are, in fact, your sword. Right, but in the case with Shunsui, it does seem like the personality is similar, but a little bit different, and in the case that they are, like, a married couple. So, not the kind of thing you see with any other Zanpaktos, anyway. So maybe maybe Shunsui's a little bit further along that line. Maybe that's what Oda... Not Oda. Maybe that's what Kubo was trying to explain. Like, Ichigo is one of the very few Shinigami to really figure out what a Zanpakuto really is at the end of the day. Quick thing I forgot to mention here, and that is regarding Kyokutsu, who is the second spirit of the the sword, the little girl. Um, so it was actually mentioned that she was created specifically in order to hide Nanao Zanpakuto, uh, you know, the, the ritual blade thing. Uh, so that could explain her origins, kind of, but not really, because it was never explained exactly how she came into existence. Like, that's a weird thing. Just like, yeah, I, uh, I needed a place to hide your sword, so my Zanpakuto gave birth to this other Zanpakuto spirit, and then she's used to hold your sword. <laughs> like, like how how is the mechanism of this done? I mean, Zanpakutos are a little weird, and Shunsui's is very weird compared to other ones, so maybe he could have this ability, but nah, I think him and his I think him and Katen got it on. He's like, yeah, I need to create another Zanpakuto spirit to hide Nanao's sword, and then that's that's how that came about! Because we see a lot of other Shinigami that just treat their Zanpaktos as, like, a partner. Or, you know, just somebody's like, oh, this is my loyal uh, friend that I've had for years. Or in Shunsui's case, this is my lover. But in the case with Ichigo, he's one of the very few, if not the only one, that was like, no, I am... I am my power. I am my Zanpakuto. So it's a little bit different probably for each sword. But um, yeah, that was Shunsui's Shikai and his Bankai. Very interesting abilities. Um, and he's still around. So it's not like Yamamoto like last time. It's not like he's dead and we can never see the ability again. So I'm sure it might pop up again in a light novel or something. So uh, now we have to take out our Gote info cards. Uh, before I do that, let me take out Yamamoto's and uh, Shunsui's here because we already talked about them. Let me shuffle these up here and find out which Zanpakuto we're talking about next week. You like the series so far? I like it. It's nice to talk about Bleach again. It is. I was thinking about buying um, Kyokatsu, Katen Kyokatsu for this video. 
it would have taken a really long time to arrive here and the swords are not like life size they're like tiny little just like you know tiny little replicas so i decided not to get them but uh and they were kind of expensive but you know um and I know, by the way, this isn't a uh, this isn't a Wakazashi. This is more of a Tonto, and it's a really crappy one I bought at the county fair a few years ago. Like, look, even this the, and part of the freaking scabbard fell off. But uh, this is the smallest blade I had, so I figured, ah, this is this can it's it, it's a Tonto, but it could fit as a Wakazashi. I'll probably use it in in Gein's video as a replica for Shinso, because that's the closest thing I got. All right, so here we go. Not looking, not looking, not looking, and what do we got? Is it something cool? Am I going to turn my head and see that it's freaking soy phone and be disappointed? No! Oh, it's Gein! Okay, cool! Awesome! I didn't even plan that! Sweet! It's Shinso! Okay. So next time, we'll be talking about the captain of the 3rd Division, Gein Ichimaru, and his Zonpakuto Shinso, and his Bankai Kamishini no Yari. So, uh, check back here next time, yeah, and let me know what you think about, uh, Shunsui's sword and his relationship with it and the whole aesthetic of the children's games. I wonder if there's some other children's games he could play. Probably, we could see him play Foursquare. You know, Stark and Lilia didn't know what was coming if freaking, uh, Koka uh, Kyokatsu wanted to play some freaking Foursquare with them. They would have just been eradicated on the spot. You know, actually, that made me think, like, what kind of games did I play when I was a kid? You know, we played Hide and Seek and we played, uh, you know, Foursquare and, like, Basketball basketball and soccer and stuff but a lot of times i think we just made up our own games you know as as we went about it you know we just like like just uh, you know even though the rules weren't 100 percent perfect or whatever we just threw together this game one saturday afternoon and we just played it you know so that's probably what we did there so i wonder if shunsui has that ability if if kyokatsu is just like i want to play a new game and shunsui is like all right let's play a game where whoever drinks the the least amount of sake loses glug, glug, glug. oh okay you lose die i, I, I win immediately <laughs> so yeah that'd be maybe that's a little bit more of an adult game there all right well thanks for watching everybody hope you have a nice uh nice it actually is a really nice spring day there's no cherry blossoms in the air here in pennsylvania but it is a rather warm day i'm gonna go for a walk later um have a good one everybody teching signing out